Hi everybody, it's Martin here from Branco Customs. Well, it's nearing the end of January 2021. Everyone's on lockdown and uh, I've just got a selection of knives here that I'm going to talk about later. But I thought I'd just check in and put some content out on my YouTube because I've done very little recently. Uh, to be honest, I've just been too busy making lives and getting on and there's just not enough hours in the day to do everything. But I feel it's important to keep up to date and, uh, you know, speak to everybody that's out there that's interested in my knives and interested in my knife making channel. So here I am. And even though I've got a face for radio, I put it on YouTube for you guys to have a look. So where shall I start? Um, I've been doing the knives now for 18 months since I started making them pretty much full time day in, day out, the daily grind, error, as you get it. Um, and I've made a lot of knives in that time. Now, as a lot of you may or may not know, me and Karen moved over here to Portugal um, just well, about 18 months ago um, in order to live a quieter, simpler life, to be able to ideally make an income from home, um, which is where the knife making has come in. It's a bit of a hobby of mine in the past, but you know, I don't mind doing it every day now. <clears throat> However, in that time, we had plans you know, we were going to go back to England and we were going to uh, do work at our old job there and uh, you know, come back and work on the knives sort of in between journeys back to England. But obviously, with lockdowns and things across the world, that's not been possible. Um, but luckily enough, I've had so many orders come in. Uh, it's been really quite overwhelming and you know I feel really blessed that I've had so many people that have uh, come forward and put some business my way um, and to anyone that's watching here that has done that I really really appreciate it it's made all the difference and it's enabled me and Karen to stay here living our dream every day so thank you and if anyone out there is considering buying a knife you know that's all the better but it's not the be all and end all. You know, we appreciate everyone's support, even if it's just on Facebook, sharing our posts to people that may be interested in getting a knife. It, it really does all help. So thank you. Um, so yeah, here we are, January 2021. And these are a bunch of different knives that I've got in the works at the minute. Um, take you through a few of them and you can see what, what we've got going on here. Now, where to start? Um, let's go with a fun one. This is a commission that I've had on my books for a very long time. And again, apologies to my client that this is taking so long to come into fruition, but luckily he wasn't in a rush for them. So this is actually a throwing axe, which I've made out of uh, I think it's 80 CRV2 steel. So I've made a pair of them, as you can see, one here, one there. And I've actually had a good go with these. Obviously, you've got to do some product testing. But before I did my final finishing on them, I went out and uh, threw them at a, a few of the tree stumps that we've got around here. And uh, they performed really, really well. And they were great fun. And in fact, when I get some spare time and some spare metal, I might even make myself a set just for a bit of a leisure activity. But there you go. Nice paracord handle. Because again, we didn't want to go too fancy on the handle on these because obviously, sod law when there's things flying through the air and bouncing off at target, A, regardless of how well you put the handles on, at some stage, they're probably going to fall off. Um, or if you do a really good group and you're quite snazzy with it, when one of these lands in the target, if you're grouping them, you stick another axe flying through the air at your other knife handle, chances are it's going to die. So... We thought paracord, that's great, nice, non-slip. You can uh, replace it for a few pennies here and there. And, you know, just seemed like a good way forward. But that also got me thinking. I mean, the custom knife business has been really great, but it's not really very clever so far as um, efficiency goes. So when someone comes to me and says, I'd like a knife, I think, yeah, that's great, what would you like? And we go through all the rigmarole of, uh, well, I think I like this profile. That's great, we've got a profile. And then which handle material? 
which uh, blade grind, whether you're on a flat grind, a hollow grind, uh, a false edge on the back, what sort of surface finish do you want, what steel do we make it from, what type of sheath do you want, do you want a leather sheath, yes I do, do you want a black one, a brown one, this shape, that shape, blah blah blah, all of that takes a huge amount of time, so, which is something I hadn't appreciated when I got into it. And as a result of that, I've started thinking to myself, and I'm telling everyone out there, I'm probably going to start factoring in a little bit of time for me to be able to make knives to my own designs. Now, the custom work is definitely still going to take, you know, a leading role in everything that I do. But coupled along with that, I'm going to start to use up some items that I've got sitting on the shelves in order to make some knives just to sell. Um, and again, other reasons behind this are, for example, if someone says to me they want to buy a custom knife with a particular handle material, the chances are you can't just buy a piece of handle material that's going to work for that one knife. You end up having to buy a large slab of handle material at great expense, um, ship it halfway around the world, and then use a tiny bit for that one project. And then there I am left with this enormous piece of material sat on the shelf, stacked with all the other pieces of material that aren't going to see the light of day unless someone happens to come along and go, oh, I'd like the same material you used on a previous knife, which does happen. But because of that, um, I've got all these materials sat there doing nothing, and I'm going to start to make some knives out of it, realistically. Um, and if that means that some of the custom orders have to wait you know, another few weeks in order for me to make some other knives, then that's something I'm just going to have to factor into the lead times um, when I tell people how long their order is going to take. Um, so joining those two points together, I recently built this knife, which again, when I made the paracord handle for this, I thought to myself, hmm, paracord handle knife. Again, it's something that I can make fairly efficiently um, because there are hours and hours of careful, delicate hand sanding like there are on a lot of my other knives. Um, and it'll give people out there an opportunity maybe to purchase a Branco knife um, at a lower price point than if they're going in for an all bells and whistles custom job. Um, and again, it gives me something else to put on my website for people to buy if they need a, a gift for someone in a, a last minute thing. I might already have something made that I can then perhaps put some engraving on to personalize it for them and then get it in the post straight away. So give you a quick look at this one. Here we go, I've got a nice uh, Holstex material, which is the same as Kydex, just a different brand name. It's got a olive green sort of carbon pattern to it. And again, there's the knife itself. And with these, I've got the idea that, you know, in time I'll probably have a few different blade shapes that I'll be able to put a similar uh, handle onto. Again, nice lanyard added on to it as well. So at some stage that'll probably be going up on the website or maybe on Facebook for sale and uh, we'll see if anybody likes that. So another couple of knives that I've got here in front of me. Um, let's just start. Let's go with this one. So here this is one of my first uh, attempts at a nice basket weave finish on the leather sheath which I quite like. And the knife itself is one that I made when I was uh, cutting out a profile for somebody and I realised I picked up the wrong bar of steel and so I thought, ah, sod it, I'll make it into an actual knife that I can uh, sell at some stage. So working over Christmas, I put this one together which is made out of 01 tool steel, nice black etch on it, it's got a black micarta along the volster, uh, 6mm stainless steel handle pins and a kind of uh, stabilised resin-infused hessian uh, on the back of it. And of course, uh, a nice little lanyard tube there as well. So again, that one at some stage will be going on the website if anybody's interested, um, you know, ping me a message. Um, and whilst we're doing it, I might as well show you some of the other ones that I'm probably going to be putting on at some stage as well. Now this one is a little bit out there and it is a 10 millimeter thick cleaver again 01 high carbon tool steel um it's got quite a funky pattern down the back of it and again it's still got a little bit of finishing on the handle but we've got 
a rock pattern on there and uh, it's going to be a real beast for chopping things. Um, moving on, this one I actually made for my wife as a little bit of a Christmas present so definitely not for sale but I thought as I've not actually put any pictures of that out on the internet anywhere that I would show people that one. So far I've done quite a few of the larger kitchen knives but this is the first sort of powering knife sized knife that I've done and she's been field testing that for me and you know she's very happy with it it's been going really well um, and it's even given me ideas for other kitchen knives that I'm probably going to do that are a slight variation on the same same pattern so moving on from there um, let's go with the bigger is better kind of route and let's have a quick look at this so this here is again for a client which they've watched a lot of Forged in Fire and if you've ever watched the uh, knife or death editions of that where they have to do the obstacle courses um, it's actually a, a blade sport where you go through they give you various things you've got to cut through in a certain amount of time and if you don't cut all the way through them you get time penalties etc um, one of the favoured things to use for that is called a competition chopper and that's what I've whipped up here so just a quick look and again this is made out of AT CRV2 steel uh, it's got a tapered tang on it and it's got a new type of G10 um, I forget the name of it but something like sure grip and it's uh, actually got layers of black g10 and in between those layers there's black rubber so you've got quite a good grip on that and again there's plenty of places here where you can fix uh, you know different lanyard holes so that one should be quite a beast and a lot of fun to use i did a little bit of testing with it myself and uh, it will cut so other than that similar ones on a the theme uh, this one's got the same material on it on the handle but the blade on this uh, as it's a skinner is made from RWL 34 which again is a very premium uh, powder metallurgy uh, steel stainless steel um, it'll last a lifetime and it's very high performance it'll keep an edge for a very long time uh, and again a nice pattern on the leatherwork stamped on there as well you know, all these sheaths I make myself. Um, Karen does some of the stitching to help, but every single one of these holes is literally hand stamped. Another pin goes all the way through like a brattle to make the hole. And then you have to flip it over, re go. Every hole here probably gets worked four or five, maybe even six times if you count it up, in order to put one thread through it. So it's an awful lot of work and time goes into each one of these. And then of course that's wet molded together so that when that slides into there it's a firm fit and again it it won't drop out but it's just nice and snug holds the knife will look after it well um going along the line here uh this one it's quite a fun knife which i recently made uh, for a client again they sent me some uh, drawings which was of one of their knives that they already had in fact two of their knives that they already had one where they liked the blade shape and one where they liked the handle and they asked me if i could incorporate the two of those together in order to make one knife that had both the features that they really liked and this is what i came up with so then it's got a, a nice uh, kydex sheath with highlander pattern and there's the knife itself so nice uh deep hollow grind it's got a very fine edge on it it'd be great as a skinning knife or camp knife um, and a tapered tang down the back edge of that and then a rock pattern on the flats and of course this is n690 uh, stainless with stainless steel pins as well <clears throat> and again completely molded sheath so that ain't gonna go anywhere moving on this next one is quite a uh, fun project that I had um, there's a client actually here in Portugal who is somewhat of a knife collector slash knife fanatic slash knife obsession type person <laughs> uh, he's a lovely guy and he runs a, a shop um, 
but this is one of his personal knives. Um, and it started life as a Falkneven F1. So in fact, I'll just grab the other parts of it. I'll be right back in two seconds. Okay, so this knife used to have a black rubber handle on it. Again, this is a high-end knife. Um, look them up online. This was the sheath that went with it as well. So very utilitarian. And again, this knife's been carried um, on sort of anti-poaching patrols in Africa for a number of years. It's had a, a hard life. Um, and my client basically wanted uh, a new look for it. So what I did was I took that very knife and I've actually made a build video of this, which I'll be putting together at some stage when I get the time. Uh, so you can all see how I did it. But I then fitted to it a Arizona desert ironwood handle. So we cut the old handle off and completely reworked it into a hidden tang with a carbon fiber bolster, red G10 liner. And uh, it really has made it such a, a lovely tactile kind of knife now. So he'll be very pleased when he, when he gets that back. And we've got some other projects on the go uh, with the same client, uh, which I'll be probably talking about in a future video. Um, and last but not least, We've got another one here. I won't show you this side of the knife because it's got someone's initials on it who doesn't know that they're getting this. But again, it's got a saw back, bolted on um, scales. It's got a completely fitted hardened steel hammer pommel. And again, 5.2 mil thick uh, D2 blade with G10 as the handle material on that one. So this is more of a survival type knife so it will be up to the task of many, many different things. And this one's actually got a new feature for me, which is a hidden lanyard hole. I've actually milled away the edges of the scales on there uh, so that you can thread a lanyard straight through the tang. So it creates quite a nice smart looking knife. So I suppose that's about all I've got to say really. Um, other things that are going on around here that are keeping us busy. Um, this workshop has got a lot of work to do in it. Um, at the minute, it's kind of been thrown together as we arrived here. I only anticipated, as I said earlier, doing the knife making uh, kind of on the side in between trips back to England and doing up the rest of the house. Um, but as it's turned into a fairly full on thing, pretty much straight away, there wasn't the time to do any of the renovation works that I wanted to do um, where I work, which is effectively a wine cellar. Um, so in here where I'm sitting, there isn't a floor. It's literally built straight on the bedrock. Every time it rains, water comes through one of the walls and across the floor. And I've currently got a couple of small streams that run kind of behind the camera and out the door, which, you know, it's not ideal for uh, <laughs> a place of work. Uh, and other than that, there's over in the corner over here, you can't see it, but there's a ginormous, probably thousands and thousands of litres worth of um, wine tank where they basically put all the grapes in and tread it around. And then there's a little sluice on the front where they can drain it out into a different vat. Again, that's taken up probably nearly a sixth of the floor space in here, um, where I literally have never been there. So um, at some stage, I'm going to have to get the sledgehammer out and get that gone and once that's gone we're probably going to start in sections uh, digging up the floor uh, just a little bit enough to then relay a proper concrete floor once we've sorted the drainage problems outside for which we're going to have to get an excavator in and do all of those bits and pieces but sure enough uh, whenever we get a spare day here or there we are getting on with other projects um, but at the same time you know clients have to come first and it's, it's most important it's that way around but yeah long term uh, I've got lots of other ideas for knives that I want to make um, it's simply a case of just getting the time to do all of that but now I've been doing it for 18 months um, my skill levels have got up to a point where I can do things a lot quicker than I could in the first instance um, but then just thinking off the top of my head, other challenges that we've come across recently has been uh, material supply. 
you know, since everybody's been locked down, it has been harder to get materials. Uh, firstly, there's a lot more hobbyists who are stuck at home who have decided they're going to build a knife in their shed. And, um, you know, they've been buying up materials. And the other one is um, things like Brexit. It's affected me um, quite a lot so far as supply chain goes. Um, since the 1st of January, there's been nothing but horror stories about import duties and things which are very real, especially here in Portugal, where nothing comes from outside the EU without being taxed. And they know how to tax properly. And they know how to add handling fees properly. And I bought a laser from China foolishly, um, which works really well. The product's great, but I ended up paying nearly double the price that that laser cost me just to get it released from the customs. And that doesn't make things economical. So I've been petrified about that. Um, all my previous suppliers pretty much came from UK. Um, so it's led me into a bit of a rabbit hole with needing to figure out new suppliers in Portugal. So, or indeed in EU. So I've been doing a lot of research every day um, when I've not been down here, hands on working, just spending time on the laptop, um, trying to obviously people don't speak English everywhere <laughs> in Europe. So try to find websites in foreign languages through foreign versions of Google in order to find the foreign name for steels and handle materials. And all of that has taken an immense amount of time. But luckily I found a few great companies. Um, there's also some fellow knife makers here in Portugal um, that have been absolutely instrumental in helping me out. They've told me uh, where they buy their supplies from, places to go to buy abrasive belts for the grinders. Um, and, you know, prices are fairly comparable and shipping is, you know, usually within a few days, it, it works really well. So now I'm kind of back on track with knowing roughly how long it can take to get items in for people. Um, and we're basically just going to take it from there. So. So far as it goes, videos like this, I don't know how often I'm going to make them, um, but I'm going to try and make them more frequently than I have been. And I'm going to upload them onto my YouTube. And if people are out there have got any interest in this, that's great. Let me know in the comments. Um, if you're not interested, don't watch. It's fine. Um, but again, if you've got any questions about knives in general, I can try and help. I'm not the world's leading expert in all aspects of knives, but in the last couple of years, I have learned an awful lot <laughs> that probably most people would never know about knives. Um, and again, yeah, keep up to date. If you see me put things on Facebook, I really appreciate it. If you uh, at least comment on them or share them, all that support means a great deal. And um, sometime in the next few weeks, hopefully I'll be putting a few things up for sale and see if anybody would like those. So. In the meantime, thank you very much. Take care.